Hello everyone, it is I, the Witch of Paint, though you may also call me Daria. Welcome to this video. Today I am going to paint a fairy house based on this little fairy godmother's house that my family and I found on one of our little outings. However, I'm only going to use it as inspiration because though it is a cute idea what we've done here, I don't like the overall design of the main building all that much. It doesn't look like a house and doesn't give me many fairy vibes. It's just a white box. That's that's the vibe it's giving me. It's just a white box in the woods. But I do use other things from the image, like uh, that little mirror in the uh, that's lying there in the box. I use some of the plants that are lying in there. And that little net thing over in the right hand corner. I also use that. Because Avian from a Discord server mentioned that it is giving some dreamcatcher vibes, like that's maybe what it was supposed to be. So I'm going to be doing something with that. And I've also noticed that there's some coins down uh, lying around inside and outside the box. So I'll probably use some of those for something. I don't do anything with the weird mesh thing on the left there. I don't know what it's for, I don't know what to do with it, and I just left it up because I didn't like the look of it. <laughs> and I also don't use the cute little blue door with a snowflake because on that side I'm going to be drawing my fairy and I didn't want it to be too cluttered so I left out the blue door. Very cute door though. I like it. I like the blue door. Uh, anyway, let's get started with the sketch. You can see that I did keep the sort of rectangle shape of the house. That is where the similarities end though as I decided to add a big flower as the roof. Just felt like you know that would give it more more of a fairy-esque feel. The windows are over shaped like the mirror that's chilling in that bottom left corner in the original building. Um, I'm also gonna make the colour of the mirror like the yellow outline. I kind of like that. I thought it would fit, you know, to make it a little bit more colourful. <laughs> and uh, as I mentioned before, there were the coins, and I'm going to be using those for a little path in front of the house. But I was wondering what the purpose of the coins was, and I looked it up, and oh my gosh, <laughs> we're about to uh, digress real quick <laughs> into the sort of places where fairies live and dwell and appear. <laughs> so allow me to tell you what I found exactly. Fairy doors or houses are put up with the main goal of course to attract fairies. They are obviously going to be small because fairies are about the size of your index finger. Usually to make the fairies feel comfortable these houses are made from sticks and leaves or whatever else you may already find on the the garden or the forest. Um, you might have noticed that the fairy house that I that is in the picture, like not the one I'm painting, but the picture that I'm using as a reference, that is not made of wood or leaves or anything. It's uh, my mum thinks it's probably styrofoam. I didn't touch it because it was a wet day and uh, didn't want to get wet hands but it did kind of look like styrofoam and that's not gonna be very good for the environment or the fairies so uh i don't know it seems like they didn't put much thought into it there but uh maybe they just used whatever they had i don't know i'm gonna give them the benefit of a doubt here <laughs> in either case once the house was been built you may put like little shiny rocks around them to attract the little winged little fellas um, which explains the coins around the styrofoam house. <laughs> they are there to attract the fairies. Um, I don't know what fairies would do with little scent pieces, but I'm sure they have some use for them. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a fairy, I'm not an expert on what fairies do with human coins. <laughs> uh, maybe they make chairs out of them, who knows. But fairies are supposedly most active during May Eve or Halloween because you know the veil between the worlds is finished at that point. So if you would like to potentially see a fairy 
that would be the best moments. Moments. Technically, because it's two different E's. <laughs> but if you are planning on putting up fairy houses, uh, do be, you know, mindful and don't put styrofoam out into nature. That's not very environmentally friendly, especially not in a wet place. Like the place where we found the fairy house there, um, and like nailing them to trees and stuff, uh, or gluing them to trees. Uh, that's also not great for the trees or the, the or the plants and stuff around them. So you know, just just be mindful of that. <laughs> it's best to build one that stands on its own and is made from materials that naturally degrade and. Uh, it's also better if it's painted with nothing toxic or not painted at all like you know you just take a bit of wood and wait I don't know engrave it maybe that would be fun uh, anyway uh, <clears throat> let's not uh, get distracted there but I myself have encountered lots of different fairy doors uh, here in Ireland uh, sometimes even houses um, we've done visited up the woods and they had a little fairy school there. I don't have a picture of it because it was quite far off the path. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it got deleted at some point, I don't remember. Maybe I do have a picture of it. If I do find one, I will blend it in here. <laughs> if I don't, then there's no image. But. It was very adorable. I thought it was cute that they had a little fairy school back in Lockma Woods. <laughs> that was adorable. And it also had, Lockma Woods also had one of the fairy doors that inspired one of the uh, characters from my fairy tale, which was a little blue door with the name Luke on it. <laughs> I do have a picture of that though, so maybe if I remember to, I will blend the image in here. <laughs> but Obviously, the tradition of leaving fairy doors or houses out in the woods is a lot more far spread than Nokma Woods, obviously. There's like entire official public fairy villages spread throughout Ireland, and I do hope that I get to see or visit at least some of them sometime. I mean, I am in Ireland now, so it, it would be possible, and I really, really want to see them and the little fairy houses because like there's so many people that make some really really beautiful fairy houses and they're really cute and I really want to see them one day one day and if I do visit them I will probably post about it I am building a little fairy house myself live on Twitch by the way I stream every Wednesday Friday and Sunday um, the link for that is in the description, but yes, I am building a little fairy lighthouse. Uh, not gonna be putting up it outside though, because I'm a bit concerned. Because one, I don't think it's going to last very long because it's mainly made out of cardboard. <laughs> and two, the paint is probably going to get up into nature because I don't have like a ceiling or anything. I don't. I think it's best if I just leave it inside as decoration on the shelf behind me. Maybe a fairy will still find it though. Who knows? Apparently, mm, fairies tend to frequent the west side of houses and you've got to be careful not to disturb them or do anything that might displease them even slightly because uh, otherwise you get a curse. <laughs> um, on the western side of the house we currently live in, we have the kitchen, but so far it doesn't seem like we have displeased the fairies in any way at all. I do think it's a little odd that they like the western side more though. What is wrong with the east? Or the north? Or the south? <laughs> Why west? Maybe when I take a closer look at some, you know, other stories about fairies, uh, I'll find out more, but for now that's all I know. <laughs> I will look more into it eventually, but let's keep going with what places fairies like to live at or hang around. Most other places where one may see a fairy are trees, 
as you know aforementioned but also caves tombs burrows and ports most of these don't surprise me though the tomb one is a bit odd maybe some fairies just like graveyards <laughs> but the general idea though is that both places are the entrances to the world of the fairies so like through the roots of trees caves because you go underground and everything so that's an interesting fact i'm going to keep that in mind for my paintings future paintings because i'm obviously going to keep painting fairies <laughs> i'm really I, i'm really interested in fairies that's why <laughs> and this gives me an excuse to talk about them <laughs> However, there are also places that are visible only once every seven years, like the Green Isle, supposedly. That sits near Rufflin Island at the Causeway Coast. Uh, I've looked at maps, but couldn't find anything. So I've also googled the name and found a company that makes frozen food. Maybe. <laughs> Just maybe that island runs a company for frozen food just to get some money in. Who knows? Or the fairies feeding us with frozen food. But it all starts with an F. Weird conspiracy theories. I've also found a place called Green, Green Island. Uh, but it's not really an island, so to speak. It's a town. But it is a northern island, like the Rufflin Island. So... There's that. Um, I do. I did eventually do find an island that has Green Isle in its name. The full name uh, of the island is Govern Isles Green Isle, I guess. I think. At least that's what it was on the map. <laughs> but it is one of three islands, which I think together are considered the Garvin Isles, and there's the Green Isle, the Middle Isle, <laughs> and the White Isle. I wonder why the middle isle didn't get a colour in its name. Maybe they were just they just didn't think it needed a colour in its name and it was just like that's green, that's white and uh, middle. But looking at maps, Rufflin Isle doesn't have any neighbour islands. So there's that. Then again, who am I to think? that a place that supposedly only appears every seven years is going to be put down on a map because most people are probably going to say it doesn't exist I don't know maybe it does maybe it doesn't I don't know <laughs> I look I keep looking into it um, but another interesting fact that I found is Hawthorn trees are a common place for fairies to live and it's believed that if you cut them down or do anything to them, the fairies are going to come and curse you. <laughs> because that's their tree, you yeah, don't mess with their trees. That's a rule, don't mess with the Hawthorn trees. But then there is also like people who put little rags or other things on the Hawthorn trees as gifts to the fairies, so that they might get good luck or maybe someone who's sick gets healed magically by the fairies I think it's cute <laughs> it's a cute idea I like it <laughs> and I thought I should talk about that a bit all right now let's talk about fairy forts because I have been to a fairy fort knock my woods as I've mentioned before I think that was a fairy fort or supposed to be or used to be at least the idea basically is that the ruins that are there are explained by fairies used to live there, but now they don't. There was a whole thing with war, a war there in one of the articles. I'm gonna have to find the story at some point. <laughs> That's the idea of it. But fairies used to live in those places where there's ruins, and Nokma once even had a gravestone on top with a cross, a big cross, um, and we did manage to get up to that point at some point. We never managed to reach the peak though, I think, that might have been a little bit higher, but we did find a gravestone. Interesting find, I know. 
you know, the runes that do have some magical feel to them. So I can understand people who believe that these are places where fairies like to hang around or where they used to live. Yeah, like I said, we've strayed quite far from the original topic of fairy houses, but I think the idea of fairy forts, like having an entire fort for these little fairies, I think it's a cute, it's, it's adorable. I love it. It's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about it, and I'm probably going to have to look into it more because it's such a cool thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep looking into fairies fairies and what they are, little legends of, around them maybe. So that's in the next videos that I do with uh, speed paints about fairies. I've got loads of other stuff to talk about because fairies are probably a very broad topic. There's probably lots of le legends around them and I am in Ireland now so I can ask people <laughs> what they think and maybe write some of those down and I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to keep going with this. Obviously not going to do just fairies, but it is a topic I'm interested in at the moment. So I'm going to be doing that. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. I'm going to be doing lots of fairy stuff. And probably some other creatures as well. Because, you know, leprechauns are also a thing in Ireland. And maybe I'll do something with that. Those little fellas that leave the gold at the end of the rainbow. Anyway, I have talked so much about fairy houses that I have barely talked about the painting I am making. You can see that I gave the house a wooden look because obviously the house would be made from things around the area, so sticks, leaves and the flower for the roof as, uh, as well. Struggled a bit with the colour of the flower, um, as you might have been able to tell, but I think in the end it turned out quite well. So, you know, I just had to keep going. I, I, I couldn't give up. And I didn't, and now it looks great. I also, you know, as I said at the start of this video, I used the little net thing from the top right corner, and I made a purple and pink dream catcher. I made it purple and pink to match the fairy dress and the flower. I just thought, you know, a little bit of colour coding there. Um, make them look like they belong. Maybe the favourite colour of this fairy is purple and pink. <laughs> the background I did using some very wet paint and I blew on it with a uh, straw, or like through a straw, blew it to the paint so that it would spread out a bit and give the uh, look of some trees. I really like the way that it looks when you blow on paint like that did have some hiccups where it got onto the dreamcatcher or something, but it, it looked quite well and I fixed everything, so, you know. There is a few little things I didn't do in the video itself, um, like I forgot to shade the uh, stem of the flower there, but I did do that after the fact, <laughs> just so you know. But anyway, we're done now, so let's take off the tape and take a look at the final result. I really love how this turned out. Um, the flower on top of the house, the house itself, that little door that leads to, I don't know, probably a cellar or a basement or something, maybe the storage room of the fairy where it keeps all of the other offerings that it gets, maybe the, it keeps the little wishes for the hu from the humans there, I don't know, maybe something like that. But yeah, I hope I, I hope you like it as much as I do. I think it turned out really pretty. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and the little fairy fun facts that I put in here. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe, like, comment and check my, out my social links in the description if you like this video. And I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you all next week. Bye!